Well, a record number of container ships are floating off California's busiest ports. What happened to Biden? What happened is the question to Biden's promise to fix the supply chain crisis. Joining us now is former White House Strategic Communications Director Mercedes Schlapp and Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor and a Fox News contributor. Good to see you both. So, Mercedes, the story is is that Great the situation was supposed to get better. Instead, we've got more container ships now than ever. So, I mean, what happened? I, I, and I have to put it in context because you work for a guy who's a builder who knows how to get things done, work through the bureaucracy of cities like New York and, and put up a building regardless of all the pressure not to do so by the bureaucrats. Uh, this is a team that can't seem to get anything done. Yeah, there's no question that if it would have been President Donald Trump, he would have resolved this supply chain crisis immediately. The one thing that the president understood was uh, being able to pull together even the most bureaucratic agencies uh, to make things work. We saw this with Operation Warp Speed, for example, and the vaccine production. And what's so unfortunate that is the fact that President Biden, he had a meeting with executives. He had a meeting with the unions. He said he was going to resolve this by uh, extending the time that they, they needed to work, which is that 20, 24 hour, you know, seven day a week that that uh, needed to be the case. And obviously, it's not functioning. Why? It's a shortage of workers, as we know. That's part of the problem. Uh, you're also seeing the freight, uh, the freight price index rise about 20 percent. That's going to be uh, su sucked up by the consumers. So, David, I mean, it's unreal the fact that we, even though the president did have this meeting, did give this big speech over at the White House, that it's only gotten worse. Yeah, yeah. And, Charlie, there's so many of the prescriptions that we've seen play out in the past several months, uh, which have done exactly the opposite, had exactly the opposite effect they were meant yeah. to. I mean, you know, uh, we have a labor shortage, 11 million unfilled jobs. That's why uh, people can't pull, pull their ships into the, into the ports because there's nobody there to offload them when they come in because of the labor shortage. And the president comes out with vaccine ma mandates that make the whole matter worse. Or he, he you know, increases the, the various benefits uh, that people get for staying at home. I mean, and now, by the way, uh, you're, you're hearing talk about whether there will be price controls, which would add more to the, sh the labor shortage that we have. We always have shortages as a result of price controls. So, uh, again, the prescriptions are always exactly the opposite of what makes the situation better. Yeah, it's, it's truly insane. Um, and so much of it is unforced errors, as you just sort of went through. It's, it's no different than the border. Uh, President Trump had in place these policies, these sensible, humane policies that prevented uh, the crisis at the border. And the Biden administration, because they were so enthralled with the political whatever and uh, their sort of ideological rigidity and craziness, they had to ram this stuff through. And so, so you wind up with a crisis that you just didn't need and you don't need. And, uh, and now, he, of course, he can't deal with it. But the thing that I find so amazing about this is that all of this is going on as President Biden and Democrats really want to become sort of the central planners that govern every aspect of our lives, from health care to, to everything. Um, and, uh, and, and, and this is their sort of tryout period. This is, this, is, this is on full display their incompetence when it comes to being in charge of anything. And so it really, I think, undermines uh, their argument that, that they should be in control of these things. Yeah, yeah. And it, it actually... Also, it wasn't just domestic policies, Mercedes. We, on, on foreign policy, uh, again, contrasting it with, with what happened with the Trump administration. I mean, you, for example, the Abraham Accords. This is something that John Kerry, the former Secretary of State, who claims to be the smartest person in the room always, or at least that's what he says about foreign policy experts, he came out in 2016 uh, talking about the possibility that, that Trump had suggested of having a deal between Israel and Arab nations without the corrupt PLO in the middle. Right. And here's what he said about Here's what John Kerry said about that in 2016. Roll tape. There will be no separate peace between Israel and the Arab world. I want to make that very clear to all of you. I've heard several prominent politicians in Israel sometimes saying well, the Arab world's in a different place now. We just have to reach out to them and we can work some things with the Arab world and we'll deal with the Palestinians. No, 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 and no. 
Well, guess what? We got the Abraham Accords, and yes, 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 it was possible. Trump did it. Trump was able to pull it off, even though Kerry's supposed to be the expert in foreign policy. <laughs> well, yes, uh, John Kerry does believe he's the smartest man in the room. That's definite. Uh, but I will say that for President Trump, the Abraham Accords was a huge victory uh, to bring bring stability to the region. Uh, and let's add to that the fact that, remember, many presidents, including, you know, President Obama said, oh, yeah, maybe we should talk about moving the embassy to Jerusalem. They never did it. And it was President Trump who said, why haven't we moved the embassy to Jerusalem? He moved the embassy to Jerusalem, made that happen, despite the fact that all these quote-unquote critics were saying there's going to be a horrible war happening in Israel right. uh, with, uh, with the Palestinians. That never occurred. Yeah. Charlie, I want, I want to switch to some other news. It's breaking today, which is these memos that came out between the Justice Department and the National School Board Association. Uh, of course, that's the organization. It's a left-wing organization. They, they promote critical race theory and all the other stuff that the parents are upset about. But we're getting these, these memorandum now that, that indicate that, in fact, there was... I hate to use the word collusion. It's been so misused over the past couple of years. But there was collusion between <laughs> the Department of Justice and, and uh, the, this particular organization uh, that shows that, in fact, a lot of stuff that uh, A.G. Garland said just wasn't true. He claimed that it was all done internally. But, in fact, it was clearly done with the, the pushing by this organization. Yeah, well, you know, we've always known that the Democrats are very much in uh, beholden to teachers' unions. What's shocking here is that they're they're basically beholden to any lobbyist group that is uh, sort of aligned with them politically, and and it proves. And, and rarely do you see that sort of literal quid pro quo laid out in black and white the way that letter. Uh, clearly lays it out, where you actually have the administration uh, completely willing to weaponize the Department of Justice in order to help a political ally and hurt political enemies. And it's, a, it's really shocking. Uh, but, you know, this is, the, you know, I guess it shouldn't be as a huge surprise, uh, given uh, the fact that you have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party t of today, which used to claim to care about working class people and minorities and all these, all these other groups, they don't care about any of that. All they care about is power. And this is how they get power and hold on to power. And Mercedes, very quickly, just to put a fine point on it, what, what happened, of course, is that, that Garland said he was going to put together this task force. Uh, some people say a goon squad right. between the FBI and local officials to try to track down parents who were too vociferous at school board meetings. Yeah, I know we're being critical of the National School Board Association for calling uh, parents domestic terrorists, but let's be very clear. The White House and the Department of Justice are also responsible for calling parents domestic terrorists. They should apologize, as the association has done. Garland should rescind that memo, uh, because this is an outrage of how they've treated American parents across the country. Yeah, well, we, we don't even know exactly what has happened, whether they've, they've put together these these forces of FBI working with local officials. It's still still not clear exactly what's going on. Mercedes, Charlie, great to see you both. Have a good weekend. Appreciate it.